So today we're speaking with Samarth and Praveen from India to hear how they've used TensorFlow.js to create a system that can recreate digital face masks based on cultural events around their country. Hey guys, nice to see you today. Um, so tell us more about yourselves and what you've made. Hi Jason, uh, this is Samarth here. Thanks for having us. Uh, I work as a product designer here in India and come with a couple of years of experience at Adobe doing front-end development and a bit of design for the AI machine learning division called Sensei. Uh, lately, I've been doing freelance product design consultation and do a bit of creative coding on the side. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Praveen. I'm an interaction designer. Uh, and I also work as an independent consultant and a freelancer, as some are saying. Although I have a very less experience of using any uh, machine learning algorithms or even like a pro uh, software or in code. So I am pretty no novice at that level. <laughs> cool. It's great to have you both here today. And uh, tell us more about the creation you've made. Yeah, um, so the project uh, which we've done over here is created a 2D uh, stencil or a template for traditional artists or digital artists to basically overlay on top of it so that they can directly import it into our tool uh, to create an AR filter or a face filter. Uh, so we're using TensorFlow.js's uh, face mesh model, uh, which people can directly, as I said, upload an image and then use that as a 3D mask or uh, if they use the blend modes uh, to create like a face paint. Awesome, great stuff. <laughs> Let's see <it> in action. <laughs> hey everyone, so here you can see like a face mask which we use in our dance form called Chaw. And uh, we, we try to use the TensorFlow model to recreate these on a digital platform where people could you know put, put them on their faces just like an AR mask. And then also we all thought that, okay, since we use these masks for traditional plays, why not uh, create some sort of a space where people could record themselves playing with their uh, masks and you know use them in their own social media uh, content since we are all locked down right now. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it's great to see a lot of variety there as well in all the face masks. And um, I guess people can contribute their own ones or how does that process work? Yeah, uh, so for this project, what we did was we asked artists to send us their own creations and what they use in their own work. So it was uh, like we, we gave them a template and they will paint their own masks or create their own versions of it. And then they could see it themselves, like how it looks on, on their face and show it to people and, you know, like share the fun. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. And I assume this is using our uh, face mesh model from TensorFlow.js. Um, to make this actually work. Uh, maybe you can tell us a bit more about your kind of process in using that because I know it's not a trivial thing to be able to take our 3D coordinates that Face Mesh provides and then convert it into a form that is usable with like WebGL and other things. So maybe you can talk about your process there and how you achieved that. Yeah, um, so basically when we first got uh, the information around like the Face Mesh model is readily available, um, we saw the example on the GitHub uh, page for the model itself. Uh, that was using 2D Canvas. Uh, so I was exploring WebGL at that moment and figured that maybe the coordinates it's providing can directly be used as points. So WebGL provides uh, different ways to render graphics and b the bare minimum one is points. So I started with that as a demo. And then uh, once we were able to achieve that, uh, with vanilla J of WebGL, no requirement of any framework as such, we got a bit ambitious. And funny enough, when I saw that image, which was telling which coordinates are there for each face part on the uh, GitHub page, it reminded me of UV maps. And then I was thinking, like, maybe you can just use that as a UV texture map. Uh, what we stumbled upon was there was no mapping for what are the XY coordinates of the UV texture to the specific points. And that was the most arduous press, uh, process for us to like build it all together because we had to manually go on in like uh, Inkscape and point out each XY coordinate of each of these. So we basically split it up among ourselves and tried to do like some trickery around mirroring them because we know like the face is symmetric. And uh, once we got that through, uh, we were able to make like some triangle forms out. And then finally we put in like a full flow full-fledged like texture in it. 
Uh, the caveat over there was because it was a UV unwrap, which was somewhat like a spherical in projection. Uh, if you draw a circle in like the 2D texture of it, it would come up somewhat like an oblong or like an oval shape. Um, so what we really wanted to do was just upload any 2D illustration because we were trying to make it for traditional artists who can possibly print that stencil out and rescan it back in. Uh, we actually came down to like went through Blender and figured there is something called front view projection for a UV texture unwrap. Yeah. Um, so I ran through like some high school math, figured all those things, and then came up with our own UV unwrap for this. And that basically allowed us to put any illustration so that if I drew a circle like or glasses kind of a thing, it came out in the same shape on the face mask as well. I see. And I am not an expert in this. So I, I'm guessing here what's going on there is that you've got the 3D mask in the in the 3D program and um, you've then got this 2D kind of texture, if you will, and kind of imagine shooting lasers through that through that image. And where they hit on the 3D model is the color that that kind of part of the mesh becomes essentially, right? But is that basically the technique you used? So basically what I did was I took the 3D shape in the research paper um, from the uh, model itself. And then that had some uh, mannequin-esque face. And I used that as a sample image, ran the face mesh model on it. And that gave me a pr uh, prediction. Using that prediction, I used... Uh, I placed the what he's calling the laser right in front of the nose tip and then just projected all those points back onto a 2D plane. Um, so flattened out all the Z depth of it and that gave me like a purely symmetric form of it. Awesome. That's, and that's great that it works so well. I mean, it looks amazing. <laughs> and um, it's a great way that you can now combine the 2D content with the 3D um, kind of mesh that you have available to run in the web browser. So really awesome. Um, so where can people try this out for themselves? Is there a link for people to try this? Yeah, um, so we've got like a couple of links. It's the project is hosted on GitHub itself. Um, we, and then we also did like a workshop with Node School SF, uh, where we walked through the process of building it. Uh, and th that's also uploaded on YouTube, so we can share the link for that as well. Awesome, yeah, we'll put that in the description after the show and, and of course people do go check that out <laughs> good stuff so it's a super fun project uh, what are your plans for the future where is it heading uh, so uh, after finishing this much of uh, code and this much of a prototype we uh, proposed this project to the chandigarh museum in in india where we were uh, we asked artists to submit their face paint work where you know initially when you do face paint you actually paint into your face but instead here, what they were doing was creating an AR face paint. So they submitted uh, us their artwork based on the uh, topic of biodiversity and we uh, and they were actually able to play with the tool and see themselves with the face paint as a virtual face paint. And uh, after that, we, we are thinking to open this, uh, have an open call for artists all, from all around the world that they could submit their own cultural masks and we could create a platform where they could, you know, like try it out on their face and share it with people. And uh, other than that, there is another branch where we are trying to put it as a tool for other artists like co comedians in our country to, you know, like have fun and create conversations among us. Awesome. Yeah, I can imagine a really great like web-based editor to literally paint your own masks, uh, maybe using 3D models in 3JS or something like this, and then you can export that and becomes part of this machine learning experience that you can then try on uh, for anyone in the world, so to speak. So that'd be super fun. I look forward to seeing that. So have any words of wisdom you want to give our budding developers who want to make projects like this? Yeah, um, I don't know if it can call it words of wisdom, but I can sh definitely share some sources which have helped me in my journey. Um, first of all, definitely is The Coding Train. It's an amazing, amazing YouTube channel where like there's a uh, New York professor Dan Schiffman, who does a lot of beginner-friendly videos on getting started in coding and creative coding and also machine learning. Yes, totally cool. I, I'm a big fan of that channel myself. And I love how he, you know, even when things go wrong, you get to see how he then fixes it and gets out of that situation. And he's done a lot of stuff with TensorFlow.js as well. So it's a great channel to go check out if anyone's interested. Yeah. Apart from that, I think there is uh, a, another YouTube channel called Two Minute Papers, and they cover a lot of cutting-edge technology bits around how people are applying machine learning. 
specifically. And then lastly, I think there's a course called Fast App AI, which just covers the applicability of machine learning. It's not necessarily JavaScript if there are a lot of viewers who are looking for TensorFlow.js. But then in general, it covers a lot of breadth around uh, what machine learning is capable of doing and how they can get started without going into the nitty gritty arithmetic and calculus of it. Yeah, definitely. But it's always good to have like the high level understanding as well to appreciate what's going on behind the scenes. No matter what language you're using, it's still applicable to all of this stuff. So that's very cool. So thanks, guys, once again for being on the show today. Thanks, Jason, for having us and giving us this amazing opportunity.